Yo, Seven Citizens Black here from Castle Black Gaming, where I get right to the point with all of my guides so you can get back out into the verse. Today, I wanted to offer up a quick loadout for everyone's favorite little med ship that could, the Cutlass Red. For now, it is one of the only three ships that can currently offer up some med play, the other two ships being a lot bigger and being more a multiplayer option than the current Cutlass Red. But we will hopefully see this fleshed out a bit more next year if work on the RSI Apollo ever finishes. Now for a complete review of the Cutlass Red, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little notification button so you know when that goes live. I mean, you've already been to my channel more than once already, so why not help me get up past 5k subs? Please and thank you. Now with the boring housekeeping stuff out of the way, let's get to the loadout. So as usual, I take care of the ship components first, as these can, for many ships, be what truly makes these vehicles shine. And so for the shields, I went with the FR-76s, which you can pick up at a couple of places such as Cousin Crows on Orison, or the Crew L1 station as shown here on the graphic. The Cutlass series recently went down a single size 2 shield, and it's looking like that's here to stay, despite some rumblings in the community over this change. The Cutlass is a ship that usually gets knocked about a bit and will lose those front forks and even the large boosters on the rear with ease, so just be careful and upgrade these, especially if you're wanting to go into heavy combat regions, especially during events like Jump Town. Now moving on to the power plant, I went with the JS400, which can be picked up at Cousin Crows or her L2, and is a pretty standard component to help you get a little more juice out of your laser repeaters. Now you can skip the coolers as of this build until a component revamp makes them worth buying, hopefully sometime in 2023. For the engine, I would go with the XL1, which is the very first component I would grab or save up for since the stock engine is a complete turtle race and no, you won't win in the end through persistence. The stock engine is just flat out slow and will take you around 13 or 14 minutes to travel across the system compared to the XL1, which will get you there in under 5 minutes. The XL1 is also at Cousin Crows and Port Tressler, making Cousin Crows the place to go grab everything in one if that convenience is your thing. Now, since the ship components are the most expensive parts on ship loadouts, your total for these parts comes up to about 186,300 credits to get the ship running well. Alright, so let's move on to the weapons, and just first start off by saying that this ship is not meant to be a super great combat vessel. You're meant to be able to defend yourself against light attacks from would-be pirates or other hostiles looking to come after you or prevent you from your medical purposes. It is, of course, possible to handle some light to mid bounties with this ship, and maybe more if you're daring enough, but regardless, I will show you your options in the weapons department here. The ship comes stocked with four size 2 CF-227 Badgers on Veriput Gimbal, and these will suffice for the majority of players. Leaving them on gimbals ensures that you can hit your targets a little easier so you can concentrate on trying to escape. However, if gimbals are not your thing, you can rip those Veripucks off your ship, allowing you to slap on four of the size 3 fixed CF-337 Panthers instead, which will boost your firepower, but you will need to be better at flying and sticking to your targets so you can front fire them to take them out. The Cutlass series ships can struggle against smaller, faster targets, Targets, so you might have some issues against the smaller targets, but if you get them in your sights, you should be able to take them out pretty easily. Do keep in mind that the Cutlass Red does not have a man turret on top, so you only have these four hard points that are pilot controlled and also don't have missiles, so again, your firepower is very limited in this ship. So anyway, that's going to do it for this loadout of the Cutlass Red. Be on the lookout for my Cutlass Red review coming later this week, and also for whatever we get from CitizenCon, I should surely be making a loadout and review for those ships as well. Now remember to be kind to your fellow gamer, don't target your friendly med players, and stay positive citizens.